Here's what you missed last time. We got our new project car. It's Godzilla! The RB30 power plant arrived. We hit the dyno for some baseline numbers. As our thirst for horsepower grew larger, the 3.2 liter stroker arrived. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the next episode of the R32 GTR build series. So we're on our way to Mozworks here to bring the RB30 for some machine work. Got it all packed up, ready to go. We'll see you guys there. Yes, here we are, Mozworks. All right guys, so we got the RB30 block here, doing a little pre-test fitment of the RB30 all-wheel drive adapter kit from Spool Imports. So you can see here where, where it needs to be machined, the block needs to be machined to give room for the bolts there that are going to bolt up the oil pan. All right, so now you guys can see here, these are the templates that Spool Imports provided with the all-wheel drive adapter kit. You can see here where Mozworks is going to machine for proper fitment here, the adapter kit. Pretty cool stuff. All right, guys, so we just got the head back from the machine shop, did some pre-machine work before we get the head over to Chris over at Porting Solutions. So you can see here a little bit of the work they did. You can see that lip there. So they machined the valve seat. We, the we went one millimeter over on that, and then you can see the little lip there. So Chris is going to match port that there to the valve seat. So Chris is also going to do some match porting. Marker it here. He's going to get rid of this this little hump here. So he's going to port that out. And we'll give you a before and after when we take it over to Chris and should make a good bit of a difference, horsepower wise. All right guys, we're here at Mozworks. Let's go inside and say what's up to the guys. What's up, man? What's going on, man? Much. How you doing, Javier? Hi, nice to meet you. Hey, good to meet you, man. Welcome thanks for, Mozworks. yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Oh, got some billet. All the parts that don't make to, to the customers, these are all the throwaways. Oh man. They're kind of expensive for always. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. Sweet, man. So you want to take a walk around through the shop and yeah, man. see what you guys got going on. Appreciate you coming in on a Saturday. Yeah, no worries. Okay, so as you walk in, you're pretty much greeted by the shipping and parts department. You know, if you need anything for any kind of engine, we can get it. Uh, we're nice. directed for 14 Moto and we work a lot with Real Street, so we can actually ship same day on precision turbos and stuff too. It's crazy. Nice. Um, but that's not the biggest part of the business. The biggest part of the business by far is the machining, which is why it makes up 95% of the shop. So when you come in, uh, typically the flow bench isn't always in the cylinder work area, but uh, the flow bench is new. It's something that we're excited about working on. And you know, for sport compact stuff, there's not a lot of guys out there actually testing the port work and giving you numerical values for how good something is. You just kind of like, hey, trust me. So what we're trying to do with our new five axis capabilities and you know the flow testing is innovate the cylinder head market for sport compact and actually provide customers with numerical data. So behind the flow bench is all the you know, normal cylinder work stuff, you know, basic stuff, you know, line home, bore home, uh, line bore, cap grinding, stuff like that. Just normal machine shop stuff. Next down the line we have our cylinder head area, which also has some more machines just kind of thrown in like crank balancing and crank straightening. But typically over here is where you see the valve jobs done and the heads actually get assembled. Uh, past this part of the shop, we get into the CNC cool stuff uh, that makes the job a little bit more exciting. So we got the CNC lathe, the CNC, I forget what that one's called, four axis machine, and then we got the five axis in the back. So, so right here is where the rest of the magic happens. So in here we have the engine assembly. It's also nice and quiet in here. The video quality just went up tenfold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we keep, you know, all the engines in here and stuff like torque plates. Uh, torque plates just simulate the head being on the block for machining. So. You'll notice any block that's still being machined has a torque plate on it the entire time it's getting the machine. Nice. Just, you know, to ensure accurate measurements in use. You know, you can machine a block without it, torque the head on, and then your measurements are off. Oh, yeah. Which, if you know, you're making over a thousand horsepower, thousands of an inch start really mattering. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you already will get this treatment. Very cool, man. Got some 2J stuff over here. Compact. I mean, you can walk in here and find the K-Series or you can find Ferrari stuff. So, That's you know, we, we do a little bit of everything and we also do domestic stuff. I don't know if you guys saw the torque plates or the label, but yeah, we got LS4 and Coyote. We do everything. And you got everything, huh? Yeah, we actually just sleeve the Coyote for one of our uh, normal badass. customers. Alright, so what we're going to do is, since this is the RB30 block, we're going to have to convert it to be able to run the all-wheel drive pump. 
But first what we'll start to do is we'll start by popping out the main old galley plugs here, the front and back, and we'll thread and tap that to make sure the block's completely clean. We'll go ahead and we'll deck the block. You know, it's a standard iron block, so it's not too complicated. We'll deck it and we'll, we'll bore and hone it to a specific size piston. Um, then what we do too, we'll take this rear freeze plug, we'll pop that out, and we'll actually machine it for a threaded freeze plug and what we make here. So if any, any problems with the track, you don't have a problem with it popping out. And before uh, honing a block, we'll machine the threads from a 11mm uh, thread to a 12mm thread so they can use the RB26 studs and we can put the torque plate on and mimic, you know, simulate having a cylinder head torque to the block so we can have a true cylinder cone. So this, this is my boss's car. Uh, this this is thing's a, a beast, man. Billet VQ, I believe it's a 4-2 stroker. Uh, custom intake manifold, all custom piping by us. Is, is this one of the first uh, billet VQs out there? Or? Not the first, but it's the first wet one that you can run on the street. The first wet one. Yeah, so nice. this is still a street car. You know, you can put a plate on it and drive it to the track and, you know, have a street That's car. That's nuts, man. That is so cool. Yeah. So, I mean, in theory, the block's good for over probably 2,000 horsepower, but we'll just keep it at a modest 1,000. And keep it. back in the day, like the SRVG adapter kits with 300ZX trans, that was prototyped in this car. The car had an SR in it back in the day. Oh yeah, I remember this is actually one of the first cars we ever filmed on, on our channel. Yeah. Uh, back in, man, what was it, 2000, 2011, I want to say. It was like still Nopi National Days and stuff like that. That, that event's gone, but yeah. man, this thing's awesome, man. Beast. This also still got full interior for the streetcar look, even though it's got like a low six or seven second cage and it's crazy <laughs> man what's the fastest it's been like i said the main thing pulling the car back right now is just lack of space in the engine bay for something like a dry sump uh, classes. We have an event coming in the next weekend, so we're going to run the event. If it all goes well, we'll cut the front end of the car off and go twin turbos eventually and probably go dry some so we can go faster. Yeah. Man, that's badass. Thank you. And then the other cool car is in here. All right, this is our latest machine. This is a Centroid 5-axis milling machine. This is all, allows us to do uh, CNC porting. Uh, we can also make continue our line of fill-up blocks, and we're going to uh, go on and make a fill-up cylinder head with this. Uh, the multi-axis machine, as you can see, the fifth axis on the head articulates, which gives better angles for certain heads that have uh, steep exhaust ports, like a 2J and the EJ, we can get out in all those ports. And it allows us to do taller blocks, like the TB48s, and even the RB26s now. That's awesome, man. That's really badass. All right, this is the latest block we're working on. It's a BMW S54 block, billet. Uh, it's for a customer over in Turkey. And this is all his concept, his idea, and we just helped him out to design it, and we're gonna manufacture it for him. That is so badass. Thanks again, Mark. Super pumped for Mozworks to get do their thing with, uh, with the RB30 block. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Thank you so much to all the subscribers. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and, and follow the build. All right, see you later, guys. Thanks. All right, guys, so we're here at Porting Solutions with Chris. He absolutely killed it on the RB head here. We have a bone stock port RB head and then his post port RB head. So you can see here what we were talking about with the hump. That's now gone. See a little hump there. That's makes a big difference. We've trusted Chris for many many years with all of our port work here for the heads the trc supra the trc 240 you know we've picked up big big power i'd say 90 maybe even 100 horse uh, wheel horsepower on the supra and it's the same one that he we have on our on our 2j the seven second 240 so he just does really awesome work so we can see here we'll do a back-to-back -back comparison If you guys remember earlier in the video where the machine shop did some pre pre machine work and Chris match ported that so pretty
just killed it. All right, so you can see the intake side here. Just a really, really big difference from the stock port. So now we got the lower intake piece on. You can see Chris was able to match port it. It's the good stuff. So our next steps with the head, we're gonna take it to the machine shop and get everything assembled, and that way we can get everything uh, buttoned up for the engine.